Hi guys, welcome back. Welcome everybody. Um, I'm just answering a couple of quick questions today. Someone asked a question who was Mr. Peabody. Mr. Peabody about my little chuck that I had for the ring. You know that I put my ring on like that? About how I made that. Very, very simple. Um, but obviously if you don't know, you don't know. It's not simple, is it? So I thought I'll just show how I made that. You can buy metal ones, but who wants to go to the expense of buying metal ones for just for making a few rings. Right, okay, I'm making this one just out of a piece of scrap wood, that's all it is. Okay, this is a piece, a uh, square bit, two by two. It's 85 mil, okay, and it's 45 mil square. Okay, this is just a bit of beach. Any wood's gonna do ya. I'm not putting a tenon, I've got a tenon on that one. That was a different piece of wood. That was um, just an off cut. I'm just using this square, basically. Okay, and this is just how I make mine there's probably loads of different ways people make them this is how I'll do my one and it works and that's what all that matters is that it works right okay first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill a hole so this is just a quick step by step of how I make my little ring chuck it works for any rings right so I'm gonna start my lathe up I'm just going to wind it, I just want a, a hole in the centre, okay? I'm probably turning a little bit fast, but it's alright, it's not a problem. It's only for yeah, a little bit of squealing. Just come out with it. Actually, I'm probably, I'm deep enough there, that's deep enough. I don't need to go any deeper than that. Right, stop that for a minute. Right, so all we went, we went in, where did we go? down there now I've gone that far so I've drilled a 10 mil hole and I've drilled it an inch and a half or 35 mil deep okay well it's an inch it's actually nearer to an inch and just over the inch and a half okay 35 mil deep 10 mil that's all I've done right that's this done with for now Now, I'm just going to turn this down to round, okay? Just to keep everything steady, because I'm pushing in on it. You don't have to, small piece of wood like this, it would be fine. I'm just going to put my, I'm just going to put my life centre there. Just, just gives out. me a little bit of support if I'm pushing. No, you're right, you can stay there Is for a minute. Right? Yeah, yeah, you can stay there. Right, you can go on this side. Yep, you can stay there. I'm going to put my face shield on. And now all I need to do is turn this round, okay, so far to that size. Now, this is for this ring I've done, which is 19 mil, okay? So I'm just going to turn roughly to, to that. So what I'll do is I'll just set, um, set a pair of calipers. Virtually dead on the 19 mil there, and I'm just going to turn it down at that. You can use anything to turn it down. I'm going to use a carbide. Okay, and all I'm going to do is come in, push in, that nearly getting there. Go a little bit more. Sorry, can you not see? Okay. Right, I'm just on it, so it's just a little bit more. I might probably have to adjust that in a bit. Right, and I'm going to get a bit more. Step. I want to do it, I'm paying the corner of the 
Centre. Don't get over critical about it. Come on. It's only for making rings, you ain't got to be over critical. There we go. Take that out so we don't forget and turn our label with it in there because that's not very good. And there we go, that's our, that's our ring chuck done. And what we'll do is we'll put a cone centre in there, like so, and then we put, pop our ring on there, bring our cone centre up, and when we do that, that will tighten it up. And the more pressure you put, the tighter that will get. And that's it. You can't break it apart because it's pushing onto the ring. And that's it, I've tightened that up quite a bit. And that, if you keep your cuts, oh, nice little angle. If you keep your cuts nice and light, don't force nothing. Um, you'll be able to, you'll be able to turn your ring nice and easy like that. Okay, it holds it nice. That's it. I'm not turning it. I'm not turning another resin ring at the moment, thank you. I just cleaned all the rubbish up from last time. <laughs> but that is it, simple as that guys. So if you want to make a little little chuck to hold your ring, that is it. Now, let me take this off so I don't have to shout. Now, um, you could make it tapered if you want. For a it, Obviously if you do different size rings, but that's why I step it, see, I put shoulders. So that's like a little shoulder that rests against that. That gives me a bit of room, and this I can I can adapt it for different shoulders all the way down. So if I go for a bigger ring, I just turn that shoulder down so that fits over that one, and just I can just sort of hold down a bit more. I'm not making loads, but f to be honest, with all these little bits of scraps of wood, I'd make one for what side ring I'm turning. Because the only thing I find if you have a tapered one, you'll put it on and you'll open. But because it's got a taper, when you cut that way, you'll find it, it can shift quite often and then it comes down a taper and then it's not tight and you'll be tight, uh, it's just a pain. But if you can push it up against the shoulder, do it there and then you can roll it over. And if you've got a shoulder here, you can make the shoulder to the thickness of the ring, what you want the ring to be. So then you know when you turn it, you turn it down to that shoulder, you're not gonna make your ring too small. Because obviously when you're turning it, you can't see how thin you're getting. And that's it, quick and simple guys, as simple as that. Look at that, I've got a beautiful ring, look. And I'm beautiful now, see? Still got mine on. Go. 
Yeah, she's still wearing hers. <laughs> so you no know, expense spared. <laughs> Easily pleased. <laughs> <laughs> Bought a bit of jewellery. How's that, you know? Right, okay, so that was that question done with. Yeah. Now, the next one who was asked was Malcolm about... Malcolm Marks. Malcolm Marks asked, could I do... What did he say? Right, I'll, I'll read keep it. That, I'll read I'm going to keep out. that for another yeah. ring. What's the possibility of you demonstrating the ins and outs of negative rake tools? What are they? What are they used for? Difference between normal and negative, etc. <laughs> right. <laughs> so here goes, Malcolm. So the negative rake, <laughs> okay. All right. Well, you probably know, guys, from my videos that I'm not a great fan. It's not, I'm not a fan, I don't use scrapers. I prefer to cut wood, okay? I don't use a scraper. Well, actually, that's a bit wrong, really, because scrapers don't actually scrape wood, they cut wood. And this is where so many people make the mistake, and that's why they make such a mistake when they call carbide scrapers, because it's not a scraper. And it annoys me, I don't know why it annoys me, but it does, when people have experienced and years of turning called carbide a scraper, when they know full well a scraper works by raising a burr raise the burr on a scraper you can't raise a burr on a carbide that's why they are absolutely useless for scraping no good whatsoever and if I had to scrape with them I would never use carbide because they're totally useless for it okay carbide are made to cut and if you go to what the inserts originally for which we first started off with the square ones for wood turning we use for wood turning tools we use metal turning ones first but the square ones are from planers and uh, spindle molders, cutter heads basically, indexable cutter heads. And they are set in a position so they cut, they never scrape. No planer in this world <laughs> scrapes the wood, okay? There is not a planer made in this world that actually scrapes the wood, it all cuts it. And the experienced turners should know that, and they don't, they, they come out with all this but I don't, I don't know whether maybe they don't know how a scraper works. So I don't actually, I have a scraper here, um, which is rather a big one. I'm, I made up a long time ago and I don't use it. Now, it probably be hard to see, but it actually has a little burr. And I don't know whether you will see that. I don't know, it's, it's a very, very slight there's a very slight burr on the top okay on the top of that chisel there's a slight yeah, burr on the edge, yeah. right well that's what we do is we raise a burr okay and that actually cuts the wood it doesn't scrape it it cuts in effect it's like having the winds of your bowl gouge okay so if we've got a bowl gouge it's like the wing of having a wing of a bowl gouge it's sticking up like that okay that's what makes that so aggressive because it's like putting your bowl gouge wing on the side of the wood okay it, it's going to grab and it's going to go in that's what that little bird does it's tiny but it's enough to make that aggression and give you that catch so comes I can't show you a negative rake because I don't have one I can show you the closest thing to a negative rake which would be and I'm going to do it on a big tool so you can see which would be a skew so what we do is we sharpen both sides okay you raise a burr but the burr because you've come to this point the actual burr that you would raise to use as a scraper is very very fine so hence a negative rate scraper, you get a couple of goes and the burr's gone. And then if you carry on, you're more burnishing the wood, you're not actually scraping it. The, the point of a negative rake is what you're doing when you put a negative rake on, is you're doing that, okay? That's it flat, that would be flat, okay? And what we've done, we hold the tool straight, and we've put that angle on. To get that angle on a normal scraper, you would just raise the handle, okay? And that's the difference it makes. What does that do? It makes it less aggressive. And it takes it. Now, people that use scrapers would uh, would know that 
when you use a scraper is you don't just angle it down and cut like that. You you put your tool rest at the buff set. You still cut on the centre line, but you angle down to it. So when you use a scraper, you will come in and you will raise your handle, okay? And you will go around. Now, if you want to know about using scrapers, I'm not really the person to... I know about using them, I know all about them, but I don't use them. I'm not a fan of them. I never have been. I was glad to get away from scraping in my early days. Um, go and watch Richard Raffin. Okay, now I'm not on about any of his copiers that, to copy what he does and then claim it as their idea and stuff. I'm on about Richard Raffin, okay? Over 60 years of experience and he uses his scrapers a lot, okay? Um, scraper all his tools really off. Anyway. Um, yeah, he uses <laughs> scrapers a lot, okay? He doesn't use negative rake and I think in all honesty, for the people that use negative rake, and I'll probably upset some people, <laughs> The people that use negative rake, if you was to give them a proper scraper, they probably wouldn't be able to use it, or they struggle with it and they get catches. That's why they're using negative rake. Negative rake isn't better, it's just easier to use, okay? It makes it easier, and that's all it is. Um, and that's the side on, on tools. You, as I say, you raise a burr. A scraper without a burr is just literally gonna burnish the wood, and it's, it's not gonna, scrape it we raise that little burr which is again like I said when you sharpen your tools if you blew them or you overheat you'll get that bit I don't have I don't sharpen mine and have a burr I don't have a burr on my tools okay I make sure I don't get a burr that's why I like to sharpen very cold and not heat up that burr is is a, what makes it aggressive so you'll go and sharpen your bell gouge up and you'll come and you'll do a few and you'll God, that's really hogging that wood and after half a dozen cuts, you'll think, oh, it's losing its edge. It's not, it's, it's, the burrs come off, that's all it is. So you'll go back and sharpen again. Well, if you get it sharp without a burr and you get that nice sharp edge and you cut and don't scrape, then it stays sharp, but that's another question. Yeah. <laughs> right, so negative rate on carbide. Well, <sighs> okay, I've spoken about that before and I, I've got to be a bit was it here because I've got, now if you're interested in negative rate cutters, I'm selling all mine at four pound a cutter. Okay, no matter what size it is, they're not 25 quid like a lot of these others. They're four pound a cutter, okay, all my negative rakes. When they're gone, they're gone, I'm not stocking them again. I got negative rakes originally because I was asked a load of people about negative rake cutters and the fads seemed to die away. It was a fad at one time. They can be good for resin, okay, because again, what it's doing with a negative rake, and we've got the two here, so you can see, here's the standard, they're a bit dirty I'm afraid, there's a the standard cutter, yeah? So you can see that. Right, and it's just that flat cutter. We've got a bevel, we've got the bevel here, okay, that's what that slope is, it's a bevel, and that's our cutter, right. And on a negative rake, all we've done, exactly the same as with the skew, it's been beveled on the top. So we've got a bevel underneath and a bevel on top. Okay. Now, it does two things. One, what it's doing is it's doing that. It's raising our tool handle for us. So by raising the tool handle, you'll all know if you raise the tool handle, it makes it less aggressive. Right, this is doing it for you. And that's all it really is doing. So instead of um, you doing that, you can go flat for scraping. But, like I've explained, the trouble with carbide is it's absolutely crap for scraping. You, you can't raise no burrs on it. But it has a good cut. Now, see, with, with the carbides, as I've said before, now, you can hold it here and you can scrape your thumb across there like that, okay? Nice and hard. Won't even break the skin. Nothing, look. I can rub my thumb across that, look. Nothing. You turn it there, <laughs> now you rub your thumb down. That could slice you to the bone. It's that sharp, okay? Now that's the same with scrape. Now a scraper, when a scraper's got a nice fresh sharp and it's got a nice burr on it, you run your finger down there, you will cut your finger. You will slice into it. Because it's not scraping, it's got a knife edge, like a, razor, like a mini razor blade sticking up like that. And that, 
cuts. A scraper doesn't actually scrape, it cuts. Okay? The, the, the terminology of scrape is wrong, really, because it doesn't scrape, it actually cuts. It's no different, like I said, a bowl gouge or a spindle gouge, it's like the flute being up. That there, if you drag your finger down, it will cut you, okay? But used like that, that would be so aggressive, it would catch, it would want to dig in. So we just roll it over. Some people roll it that way, and then you're scraping, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that edge off, okay? So that's why we have a, a bevel and we shape it, so we can actually come in here and use the bevel and we can pick up by the wood cutting here and it's slicing, okay? So that's why we always try to cut on that edge and slice, not that way, and scrape. Scrape is no good. Wood doesn't like being scraped. Nothing likes being scraped, okay? So, with these, I'm gonna just chuck a little bit of wood in. You might be getting bored of this, you've probably all switched off and gone and I'm talking to myself. I don't care, I talk to myself all the question, time. Yeah. I talk to myself all the time, it's the only way I get any intelligent conversations yeah, really. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's when you start right. answering yourself back that way. Oh, well, it's not, it's when I argue with myself because yeah. neither of us are giving, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> we're both as stubborn as each other. <laughs> we're, we're as stubborn as each other. Yeah. Right, I'm just gonna turn a little bit with this, right, and we'll have a look at the difference with the negative rate as in carbides. Okay, so this is the standard one, and I'm just going to, this is the standard 15 mil, okay? scrape it up with my finger okay and I can feel it there right so that's the standard just going in flat so now we're gonna have a little go with a negative rate and we're just on center that's all we are and I'm just gonna push it along nice and gentle rate actually has kicked up a little bit more than the standard. Yeah. Now the only difference with it is the negative rate isn't as aggressive. So now if Lisa comes around here. Give me a mo. See now this is where our problem is. This is negative rate. So when I put it in here and I turn this, okay, this is where we're scraping, right? Now it's not as aggressive as, as the standard, but if you look, it's all just small little pieces coming off, okay? And the same here, when we do this, it's more, you can see it moves more. This is where this, and look, you can feel it's getting a bit, it gets a little bit more grabby, okay? That's the difference on, if I hold that, and that gets, look, you can see where the catch is. It's not bad catches, but you can see how it grabs. With the negative rake, this is this one, we go here, that doesn't happen. Even now I'm pushing really hard on here now, to the point it makes it hard for this to, to, but it doesn't grab. The reason being, all we've done is where we've got our standard, we've taken it and we've lowered it. So if we had the tool rest up higher, we've lowered it like that, and then it won't grab, okay? I can't do it because I'm going below. I don't want to move the tool rest at the moment. Right. We'll clean that up just with the negative. Rate. So to me, the negative weight, right, I've cleaned it up. Now, the benefit we have with the, the round is we can come, because we've got a bevel, 
Now we're not cutting, we're not cutting. And all I have to do is come on that bevel, and now I'm cutting. And I come across there like so. Now with that, now I'll get a finish like that, in one pass, okay? So we're still doing, we're not scraping, because we've gone from where this is a scrape, okay? We've gone here, so it's more of a peeling cut. Look, you can see where the, the bevel is. So we're on that bevel, and all we do is we just come in and we gently come on, and there we start cutting. We don't raise a handle because we've got our bevel. We're cut, all we do is we push forward a little bit, and that means the bevel is actually in contact with the wood, so it's bevel controlled. Okay, now a lot of people will say you get a clean cut to turn it to five and pull it along. Handle in front of the cutting edge, this way like this, yeah? This is what, what they're telling you. And what we do is a shear spray. Okay, it's not a bad finish. I can feel the slight roughness, okay? Just here, you can see, can you see that kicked up, the, the kicked up grain? Now, again, we can do the same with a negative break, just as a negative break. We can turn it, handles in front, and we'll come along. Notice the negative break doesn't move as much wood. Right. To be honest, the negative break doesn't feel very good. We've got uh, just as much torn grain, okay? So, on both sides, neither one's doing really well like that. But now, if we come in, and this is our standard one, and instead of turning, handle in front of the cutter, which is what people will tell you to do, to come along, what we do, is we go handle behind the cutter, rotate it, and we pick our cut up here. And now we've got our bevel, our bevel's in contact with the wood there, yeah? And all we do is we rotate. And now we pick up a cut. And we push through. now we get rid of all the torn grain okay because now we've we've not scraped the wood there's no um there's no sheer scraping we are cutting because we are bevel controlled we've got a bevel on the of the cutter cutter has a bevel okay we've got the bevel on can you see the bevel right and we are pushing along that way now and the negative break We've got the bevel and we've come along, but we do have the problem that this side is going down. So, it, it, although you'll get it, it's a lot harder and it doesn't work exactly the same. Get a little bit of bounce there. Take off a little bit. Right, let's have a look. I think I've got probably got as good a cut. No, look, see? I kicked up a bit of kicked up a bit of terror. That's because the the two coming together. See we're we're taking that angle away, so that's why negative weight I don't scream about them. If you like, I find this way. Now the problem again comes to when um I hear these experienced turners, turners been turning for a long time. And I would like to say that they would never come in and do this with their spindle gouge. But unfortunately, they do. And they come along here and they do this with their spindle gouge, okay? But what you should actually be doing is coming in here and doing this with your spindle gouge, okay? And when you do that, the, the kel which dropped off will stay long and it won't 
curl up this way. That was cut out, that was torn out. And that's the difference of if you go this way, because the tool's sharp, it will bring it out. Okay, but you can feel it's, it feels rough and it's torn. But what you should be going is for this way, which will you will come in, and then you will get more control and you will go all the way along like so. And that one, that one's been dragged out, this one's, no, that one's been dragged up, this one's been brought up. <laughs> there you go. That's the difference of living here down and living down, down in north. London. <laughs> living the, yeah, down south or up north. <laughs> and I'm not saying which one has which. Right, okay. So there you go. Now, there is a real plus with a negative rake though, in a certain place. And that's when you use the swan neck tools. Because you all know how because you're overhanging the tool and how grabby they can be, put a negative rake on it, it totally changes it and it is so much better. It doesn't grab, it doesn't butt bite on you, it doesn't try to twist, it will just do it. Because basically all it does is calms it down, okay? If you're new to turning and you are getting, uh, like I said, if you're roughing down and you're getting a bit of grabbing, getting a little catches or something, if you change to one of these, it will all go away. That These are, I'm not going to say it's impossible, but it's 99% impossible to get a catch with negative rake. And that is basically why people use them. And it's the same with, with um, scrapers. With scrapers, we raise the burr. Um, I can't really show you properly. I've only got my big one here, and it's a bit, a bit overkill, really. Um, again, it doesn't matter so much on side grain if I'm on centre, um, but that is actually that is actually cutting, okay? Because the burr's up, um, and again we can do the same. We can come here and we can shear scrape by bringing the handle round here. But in fact, if you actually bring your handle the other way and shear scrape, or actually shear cut, you can actually begin to get more of a, more of a cut. And again, it's exactly the same, well, you can really finish with it, okay? Um, and you can actually use it the same, you can actually bring your handle this way. A lot of this bringing it this way and bring, bring the handle round and use the bevel of the tool because even a scraper still has a bevel and our cutting edge, remember, is going straight up. So when you come in and it's, this is easy on a spindle, when you come onto bowls it gets a little bit different um, because on, on bowls the way our, our grain is going and I'm not putting a bowl on but, um, so don't worry. Because we go from this orientation to this, okay. Now, see, we're fine when it's going this way. We won't get any any real nasty catches. But when it's this way and it's turning, it's not when you're cutting the grain here. It's when it gets to that, and you're cutting there because then we're cutting with the grain, and that's when tools like scrapers. See, that would be all right flat. Like I had it there, I didn't have to raise my handle, cutting flat, because it's coming round and it's cutting here. When it comes that way, that's when the difference is, that's when you want to raise your handle. So when you're inside a bowl, that's when you need to raise the handle, because that's when you'll get the catches. That's what catches a lot of people out, because you're, you'll come around and, as I said, when it hits here, it's fine. When it comes down and it's this way it catches, that's when it will want to dig in. So you raise the handle, or you use negative rake, which is when negative rake comes in because you keep it flat, and you've the shape of it is already raised the handle, and that's all negative rake does. It it basically raises the handle for you without you having to raise a handle. That's all it does. It makes it less aggressive. Okay. Uh, myself personally, I I don't use negative rake at all. I'm not I'm not a fan of them. Um, there's been odd, odd little jobs. Maybe if you're right down in the corner of that that 
bowl or pot where that transition where it goes from the side round then a negative rate yes you can get right in there and you can just gently brush it round um, personally I wouldn't use an, uh, a standard I, if I'm going to scrape any I, I will use a carbide because at the end of the day I can just come around with it roll it over and I can just gently tickle it in there but again very rare I use a negative rate I will normally use a standard and it will be a case of roll it over drop the handle right down and I get a cutting angle that cuts so that's it basically um, yeah negative rake is basically it just softens it that's all it is you know I take the bits as a baby one really um, people that tend to use negative rake can't use standard ones if you can use a standard scraper it's far superior far far better so and that's not just coming from me people the same Richard Ruffin he'd always tell you that he doesn't own a negative rake scraper he doesn't use them I know he uses his skew now and again but that's that but yeah so there you go guys hope that cleared up some bits um, if not then don't worry just skip the video and go and watch something else <laughs> so right that's it but negative rate cutters if you are liking them and you are interested in them like I said what you use is up to you if you want to scrape the wood to death and then spend 20 hours sanding it it's up to you that's what you want to do if you're happy doing it do it if you want to cut the wood then you can learn to cut wood um, you do what makes you happy and what what you're doing it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks of what you're doing okay it's just if you want to know how to do other things there are you can find out okay um, but negative rake yeah if you're interested in negative rake cutters any size cutter they're four pound and that's it okay I'm um, just getting rid of them once they're gone they're gone and they're selling quite fast so once they're out of stock I won't have any more but like the other cutters you must buy two to get three UK post. Yeah, obviously you got to buy two. I'm not going to. I'm not going to post it for four pound. It's going to cost three pound eighty to bloody post them. Yeah. Okay. At least two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you got to buy at least two if you want them posted out to you. So there you go. Right, that is it, guys, and I will catch you up on the next one. What do you think, Drafty? You got your nine mil box follower yeah. there, haven't you? No negative yeah. break on him. No, he ain't got a negative break. Neither he's got a normal <laughs> nine mil, nine mil, nine mil standard cutters. That's what he uses on his box follower. Best thing, I? yeah. <laughs> right, okay, guys, that is it. I will catch you on the next one. So, to the pit. Bye, guys. <laughs>